we are going to talk about power, self-divine empowerment, and the world affairs. And frankly, I don't know how to say this other than just to put it all on the table. If you are listening to this, then you are meant to hear what I have to say. Do what you will with the information. At present, the whole entire world of human population is being subjected to COVID narrative restrictions, lockdowns, loss of businesses, homes, families, faith, spiritual practices, well-being, and fundamental freedoms. Why is this happening? We all can say it's propaganda from the media. We can say it's government power grab. We can say that it is progressive movements. We also can say it's the rich and powerful elites trying to control humanity. We can say that COVID is dangerous and people have to protect themselves from dying. We can say we have no choice in the matter, but just to go along with it. And probably other reasons most people will come up with as to why things are the way they are presently in the world. It all seems reasonable, and it all could be justified one way or another. But can we be honest? Can you be honest about this phenomenon? Well, after watching this trend and forecasting these events for more than 25 years, I can tell you why I think that things are the way they are. I can sum it up in two statements. One, the worship of false gods and two, the lack of true spirituality, that is a personal relationship with a divine creator, which has nothing to do with institutionalized religions. Both categories are different sides of the same coin. Let's start with false gods. You may say to yourself that you don't worship false gods because you believe in Jesus Christ or Muhammad or Buddha or any other prophet that your institutionalized religion is founded on. However, is that true? What is a false god? And how does one worship a false god? In order to best answer that question, I'll ask you some questions to consider for yourself. One, do you idolize someone or have an icon? Two, in your view or perspective, is someone, some institution, some doctrine, some group or person, have you put them on a pedestal? Three, do you feel some persons or people are better than you are, more powerful than you are, more intelligent or educated than you are, more elite than yourself? Do you, do you think these things of human beings? Do you feel or think or regard these people to be more special than you are, more gifted, more beautiful, more successful? Do you compare yourself to these people? Long to be like these people, even to the point where you would actually do anything to be like these people? Or let's ask different questions. Do you overly esteem or analyze positions, jobs, careers, fame, 
and people who have it? Do you idolize the material wealth and lifestyles, cars, homes, and other material objects that these people possess? Does these things dictate how much you love, regard, respect, or honor these people who have it? If they didn't have these things, would you pay them any attention at all? Would you even care to know who they were? Would you? I have another question. If any one of those people that you see on a screen or in a building occupying an office was just Joe or Mary who lived down the lane, if Joe and Mary who lived down the lane from you told you that you had to forego your freedoms. You had to put something into your body, like an experimental drug, in which you do not need, nor are you sick. Would you listen to them? Would you do it? What if Joe and Mary told you you couldn't go see your family, or go to work, or school, and demanded that you listen to them simply because they said so. Would you comply to their demands? Would you believe them? Would you go along with blind faith? Would you comply to Joe and Mary who live down the lane from you? I'm willing to bet that you wouldn't. I'm willing to bet that you would think Anyone who would listen to Joe and Mary making outlandish demands of you had lost their minds. And I would completely agree with you. They have lost their minds. So how does one worship false gods? One worship false gods by surrendering their will to this idol. How do we surrender our will? We surrender our will by foregoing our power to choose for ourselves. By allowing someone else to think for us. By allowing someone else to dictate our lives for us. By allowing someone to dictate our values, our morals, and our standards. By basically surrendering our own innate power of will and putting it into someone else's hands. And that someone is another human being. There is only one that we are to surrender to, and that is divine source of all things. But to surrender to divine sources all things is actually not a surrendering at all, because anything we have comes from divine source. So are you putting people or material worldly things on pedestals and regarding them more important then you are, then you are worshiping a false God. If you are adhering to the dictation, to someone else's thoughts, plans, ideas, morals, values, and foregoing your own, you are worshiping a false God. If you are prostituting yourself for worldly things, for material objects, for worldly status and acceptance, that person or group becomes a false god. There is nothing that is more important than the power within you. Jesus is recorded to say, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his own soul? 
The answer to that question is nothing. Why would you take something that is beyond measure in worthy and worthiness and value for confetti? Worldly things are confetti. You came into this world without it, you will leave without it. So how important is it in comparison to the infinite and internal state of your soul? How does it make sense to trade or compromise something so unbelievably valuable in reality, which is your own soul, your own self, you as a spiritual being, eternal for something that is temporal and not worth confetti in the greater scheme of things. It does not make logical sense and it does not make divine sense. To be truly self-empowered means to be in harmonious alignment with divine source within yourself. And to be in tuned to divine source in all others with respect, love and regard. There is only one power in creation. There is only one source in creation. That one power gives everything life and existence. That one source is the source that creates all resources in creation, in which you are one of those resources. To even think or believe there is more than one power or one source is to worship for false gods because in your mind you are attempting to create another source of power you are saying that the divine source is not the only source the divine source power is not the only power you are using your imagination to try and attempt to create another the divine source is all things. It is the Alpha and the Omega. To say that anything else is the Alpha or the Omega or a power or a source is to create in within your own psyche a false God. It is written that Jesus said all that I can do is because of the Father, the divine source of all things. Even Jesus Christ acknowledged the one power, the one source, and which he was in perfect harmony with. So to be empowered within yourself is to have awareness and to acknowledge what is that power and where that power vibrates, circulates, and is resourced from. That power is divine source that is built into the software of your own being. To acknowledge it, to respect it, to appreciate this, to have gratitude that we have the freedom to call upon that one power that one source of all things is to be self-empowered we need not look to nothing else but to the one source power for all of our requirements and it is infinite and unlimited when we regard other things as a source of power 
or resources. When we adhere to other things, when we cater to other things, effectively, we are creating false gods within our own psyche. And false gods, like confetti, will be dropped to the floor and swept away by divine power. It is also said, no man can serve two masters, lest he holds to one and despise the other. In reality, there is only one master, and that is Divine Source. Divine Source loves us unconditionally. It loves us and wants the best for us. It is the pathway to life eternal and freedom. It is the pathway to joy and prosperity. A false God is the one that would enslave us. To worship a false God is to put yourself in a position of limitation. Hence the warning, do not worship false gods. Because false gods an illusion, it is an illusion that comes out of vain imaginings. Only you can say whether you have been worshipping false gods or not. Well, that's the end of this uh, video part two. Stay tuned for part three. Enjoy your day and the many blessings in which divine source are bestowing upon you.